In this video, we'll take a look at enhancing Excel with some formatting tools. Specifically, I'll be doing the review assignment in Appendix D, Steps 1 through 5. The first step asks you to open a file called Elements and to do a Save As and to call it Elements Table, which I have already done. And then they're asking you in the documentation sheet to fill in your name, and the current date. In step two, they ask us to create a new cell style named eTitle, and so we can be anywhere when we do that. So we'll, I'll just click on a blank cell, and if I go to cell styles, I can choose new cell style, and then I'll name it eTitle, and then I'll click on format to be able to set the specific format for my new style. So the first thing that I want to think about is the font size. So I'm going to click on the font tab and our font size is going to be 18 point bold. Text will be centered horizontally. So let's go to the alignment tab, choose our horizontal alignment feature and then choose center. And we want a thick single bottom border in that olive green. So I'll go to border. I'll choose this line style because it's thick. In color, I'm going to choose that same olive green. And then by clicking this button here, I can say that I just want my text to be underlined with that thick green border. And so I have everything that I want, so I'll go ahead and click OK. And then this is a little synopsis of what we have chosen. And I'll click OK again. Now it tells me in step three to apply this eTitle style to cell B4 of the last five worksheets in the workbook. So uh, I can't see all five worksheets, so I'm going to close my scroll bar down a little bit so I can see, and I'm going to click on the first one, which is suborbital, and then I'll shift click on the last one, which is data, and that groups all five. So now whatever I do to this suborbital uh, sheet, will take effect in all five of the selected sheets. So they want us to use this in cell B4. So I'll click on B4. I'll go up to my cell styles. Here's my new eTitle style. I already see a sample of what it's going to look like. When I click OK, you can see that it has centered, and I'm using that 18 point font and that green color and when I click away from it you'll be able to see the bottom border. So let's move now to step four. In step four we're asked to create a custom table format from uh, the table that's on the data sheet. However notice that we're still grouped here and so we won't be able to do that until we ungroup. You ungroup by clicking on one of the sheets that's not in the group. So when I click on documentation that ungroups we can see that from the title bar up here. And then I can go to the data sheet and I'll position my cursor somewhere inside of this table. To create a new table style or a custom table style, you go to Format as Table, New Table Style. In this dialog box, we're, we have a list of elements that we can choose and then we can apply a format to each element. We're asked to create a header row, so let me choose that element, click Format, and our header row is going to be, it's going to be white text on a dark olive background with a double bottom border. So our fill, we know, is going to be that olive green. Our border is going to be a double line in olive green. We'll place that on the bottom. And then our font is going to be white. So I'll change my font color to white. And let's click OK and we've begun to build our table format and so here's a little picture of what it will look like. Now the second thing that we want to do is have banding and rather than the typical every other row with a banded color we're going to do every fifth row. So we'll start with our first row stripe and then we're going to spin that to five. So our first five rows will have a pale green background. Uh, we'll do that by clicking format choosing fill and going to a pale green. Now our next five rows, so our second row stripe, again making sure it's five, choosing format, this one the fill will be white. I'll click OK and you can see we have a little sample of what it's going to look like. Let's click OK 
and then we want to apply it. So as long as our cursor is in the current table, we can go to Format as Table, and there's our custom format. Oh, I forgot to name it. Let me do that now. So if we go into, if we right click and choose Modify, the table style name is up here, and we were going to call this eTable, and click OK. All right, now let's apply it. So we'll go to Format as Table, choose our eTable style. It asks for a confirmation. Note that we do have headers. We'll click OK, and I'll click away so that you can see what it looks like. So there's our header row, and then we have our banding of light green, white, light green, white. In step five, we're going to do conditional formatting. So we're supposed to apply this to the suborbital blocks sheet. I'll go ahead and select that sheet. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to highlight all of these cells with a letter in them. That would be kind of painstaking to do it by hand, but what they've done is they've provided us with a range name, suborbital, that already has all of those cells selected for us. And our goal here is to apply colors to each of these uh, letters. This will be our legend. So our S cells will be orange. Our D cells will be turquoise. Cells with a P will be lavender. And cells with an F will have a color of olive green. So all of that is done with conditional formatting. This will be a new rule. And we'll choose only cells that contain the specific text containing an S. The format, remember, for S was an orange color. We'll click OK, and you can see that happening. Now we'll do it again for the next three. So, new rule, format only cells that contain specific text, and the next group is the, the ones with a D. That format will be a turquoise color. Again, you can see that's happening. Continuing on. Another new rule, specific text that contains an F. That will have an olive color. And you'll continue on until all of your blocks are color coded. And the last thing that you want to do is do some uh, custom formatting where you will create a custom format that will hide the contents of these cells. We want to not show these S's and D's and P's. To create a custom format, you'll need to launch the uh, formatting dialog box by clicking this little more button, choosing custom, and then the code that you need to type in is three semicolons, right together like that. That custom format will cause the contents or the characters in the cell to be hidden. So if I click OK, you can see that all of the characters have been removed from all of the cells. This is the end of the video. I hope it's helped you.